Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Neutral Zone Rewind. Uh, we had two tournaments this last uh, weekend. We had the Cornhusker Clash at uh, UNL and the Michigan Dodgeball Cup. Uh, we'll get started with the Cornhusker Clash here. Mitch, what do we got for the scores for that one? So, as we saw earlier in the year, the Cornhuskers and the Pioneers had uh, another doubleheader match against each other, and it ended up basically the same way we saw it earlier in the year, with uh, the Cornhuskers of Nebraska going 2-0 and on the day, with two very convincing wins, the first game being 7-1, to and then following that up with a 6-2 to to victory. Overall, it was a very dominant day for the Cornhuskers, who are still showing that they're the dominant team in the Central Region. But as we've said all year, the Central Region is kind of an unknown to how good this Cornhusker team could actually be. Uh, and I guess that really just comes down to how they'll perform at Nationals, which we will talk about a little bit after we talk about the Michigan Dodgeball Cup. Yeah, uh, with, with UNL, you know, they're undefeated on the season. It's undeniable. They're, they're blowing out the teams that are in front of them, but the, the teams that are in front of them haven't really been the highest in the rankings. Uh, there's rumors of them potentially coming out to war at Akron, and I believe if they did that, that would be, we'd get to see much more of what this team really is. Uh, I do believe that they're a good team. I fully do. Uh, but it's definitely, we're going to need to see them play some, some real teams pretty soon here. Obviously they're, they're very far ways away and it's hard for them to travel consistently, but, uh, yeah, you would love to see them play some higher level competition than, uh, than just who's been able to make it out in the central region. So yeah, moving on, we'll go to the uh, Michigan Dodgeball Cups uh, Cup. Uh, Mitch, what do we got for the scores for that one? So the MDC, uh, it was a great tournament. I was able uh, to watch it, uh, and uh, here were the scores for the Michigan Dodgeball Cup. The Spartans started off with a convincing victory over the Chippewas of Central Michigan, six to nothing. Then Grand Valley would get a win over Saginaw Valley, the Battle of the Valleys, four to one. Saginaw would then get uh, their first win of the day over Western Michigan, 3-2. to two. The Lakers would continue their route, uh, this time against Central Michigan, 8 to nothing. The Spartans would follow, follow up with another shut, uh, sh- uh, shutout, this time against Saginaw Valley, 6 to nothing. The Broncos would get their lone win on the day with a 3-2 to two victory over the Chippewas of Central Michigan. Saginaw Valley would then beat down on Central Michigan 4-1, to one. and to round out the day, the game that everyone was looking forward to, Michigan State versus Grand Valley. Michigan State goes back to back to back, a three-peat, 3-2, three to two, they win and capture the Michigan Dodgeball Cup again. Yeah, I mean, hard to deny this is the third win in a row for Michigan State at the MDC. Uh, really, we kind of came into this weekend knowing that it was a two-man race. Uh, unfortunately, the other three teams in the Michigan region were not able to put together a full 12. You know, WMU, Saginaw, and CMU are very much uh, rebuilding programs right now. That being said, uh, you know, it, it seems like CMU seem to be really gaining ground uh, in terms of just the, you know, the, the experience that they're gaining going to more tournaments. We've seen them come to a few now. And, you know, their match against WMU was only 3-2 to two by the end. That's a far cry away from when they were getting blown out 7 to nothing, 9 to nothing at a doubleheader last semester. So, congrats to them. They're, you know, obviously, tough performance, but they're starting to really look a lot better as a program. I, I think in the next, uh, next couple of years, we could very much see them return to, you know, closer to what they used to be pr- prior to COVID. Uh, I, w- I would love to see that. I would love to see the entire Michigan region be more than just the MSU and GV show. Uh, and yeah, going back to those two teams, obviously, I think Nationals is still very much so anyone's game. As much as this was a very close game, or close win for MSU, you know, they've come out of the MDC and won three in a row now. It's really hard to deny how up in the air National still is. Um, you know, GV is still playing these matches very, very closely. It feels like anyone in the top four or five of uh, of the rankings can really bring home the title. Michigan State, you know, props to them. Congrats to them on another uh, another NBC victory. Um, GV has has not been able to really travel as much as they normally do. Uh, they're another team that is rumored to potentially come out to uh, the war at Akron coming up in March. 
that would be great to see. That would be another, you know, if we could see them play some other top competition teams like Ohio State or UC, that would be fantastic. Just, you know, really get as much of a grip on where these teams stand before going you know, into nationals. I think that would lay out what to expect when nationals does come around. And yeah, so yeah, go, I, yeah go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I completely think that this Michigan, uh, region, even though it's very top loaded, as we talked about, I still think that in everyone's minds, unless you're talking about OSU, I think they're probably the favorite to capture the national, you know, championship this year. I mean, if I had to put money down, I would put it on either Michigan state or grand Valley, uh, the Ohio region, although insanely good as, uh, actually the Ohio dodgeball cup happens in two days from uh, the recording of this, um, I still think that Michigan region, even though Ohio is more well-rounded, I think Michi- uh, the Michigan region has the overall top talent to once again get another national championship. Definitely. And it's, you know, even though GV has lost the last couple uh, matchups to MSU, they it's been ages since they have failed to, you know, make a championship. Even if they haven't won, they are almost always in the championship. It's been... God knows how long since uh, since we've seen them either win a title or be the runner up. So you can never truly count them out of the running, uh, no matter how many you know regular season games they lose. Until you see them out earlier than the championship, you know you can't you can never just count them out. Uh, and yeah, I, I very much so expect nationals to be a great event. And prior to that, I expect uh, this upcoming ODC to be a, a great event. We. You know, the Ohio region is absolutely loaded this year. There's a lot of really strong matchups. You know, you've got Kent Miami in the first round. You've got Akron OU in the first round. Those are some brutal matchups, and it's wild to think of how much talent is in that region right now. So we will definitely be back to you with the scores and the results of that game. We'll have our thoughts and our opinions and storylines and everything. And, yeah, with that, thank you so much for tuning into another Neutral Zone Rewind.